what's up everybody and welcome to another episode of the motherland experience it's your girl nye here and today i have a very special guest for you i'm gonna be sitting and chatting with the amazing jimmy thorne he is the owner of printing palace here in accra ghana he is going to be sharing his wonderful experience to the motherland among other things as well but trust me you do not want to miss so sit back relax and let me take you for a ride I am sitting here with this amazing man. <laughs> he is, we have become friends already. He is just so awesome. So you guys, please help me welcome Jimmy Thorne. Hey, Jimmy. Hi, how are you? And I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for coming on the channel. It no is problem. truly an honor. So please, can you tell our lovely viewers where you are from? I am from a place called Wilson, North Carolina. Okay. And uh, I'm from... Ghana, West Africa as well. <laughs> I feel like I'm from Ghana as well. So how long have you been here? I have been here for approximately 19 years, maybe 20. Wow. Who's counting? 19, almost 20 years. We're going to get into a lot. Okay. If you're listening in this interview, no we're going to get into a lot. So you being here for 19 years, what led you to Ghana? Please share with us like your journey. Oh, God. You know, I... As I was speaking to you before, mm -hmm. I was tricked into coming here. Uh, I don't want to get into the specifics, but right. I was tricked into coming here and I had no idea that I would like it. Once I got here, uh, I said I have a 30 day visa. Mm -hmm. Why not stay and enjoy the people? I'm here already. So I walked, started walking around and the people, the environment, they were so friendly. It was so beautiful. I fell in love. Oh, it was like it was like a matchmaking in I'm heaven. Serious. God in you, right? I'm telling you. <laughs> I, I, I packed up and I, I went home after 30 days. I went home and I rented my house out. Uh -huh. Two months. Wow. And I came back here and I didn't go back home again for five years. Mm, so you were here, so God, so you were led to God, and you didn't come from like back home till five years later. Five years later, yes. Wow, yes. that's amazing. Yes. That's amazing. I can tell like there's like a glimmer in your eye when yes. you talk about Ghana. Yes. It's like you're like, this is just like a dream come true for yes. you. Yes. But you came 19 years ago. Yes. So this was before the hype. This was before yes. the year of return. Yes. This was before I even came. I mean, yes. you know, it was a long time ago. Right. So what you're with your family and friends what did they think about you that's another thing yeah. i don't want to talk about oh my god <laughs> they were like jimmy what are you doing you have family here you this but i i don't know what led me here maybe it was it i don't know i can't explain it it's an inner feeling that you get mm -hmm. when you get here especially knowing that you're back in the motherland and this is where your ancestors are from. Exactly. And, and and you don't learn a lot about Africa when you're coming up in school. No, you don't. Uh, it's not in the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And when you actually come here and experience it, mm -hmm. as a feeling that will never, ever leave you. Oh, I love that. I love that because when you say that we really don't learn a lot about the continent. So when you come here, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like an overwhelming feeling. You know, you see your own people, you see black people on billboards, right. on the money. Oh I was like, God. so like, like the money. I'm like, oh my God. God, I can't believe that you were saying the exact same yes, thing. It was an overwhelming feeling. I'm telling you, that's exactly you are taking the words out of my mouth. I saw a black people on the money yep. i saw filling stations yep. black owned i saw all these big buildings blacks own everything i mean it's a feeling of accomplishment and you feel that you're on that money oh, and you feel exactly. that you're the owner of these buildings as if you have a stake yes. in africa oh. especially when you're walking around mm. and you don't feel like you're out of place 
it's, right. it's a completely different feeling. It's totally different. And this is what the series, The Motherland Experience, is mm -hmm. all about. Exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, because it is an experience. Yeah. It really is an experience. And of course, it varies from person to person. Absolutely. But it is an experience. So can you tell me, like, about, I know it's 19 years ago. Mm -hmm. Tell me the very first feeling that you felt when you got off the plane. When I got off the Can't plane, remember? yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can still remember it now. Oh, and wow. sorry for getting there so excited before. Oh, I'm going to no. try to contain my, my enthusiasm. No, it's okay. But when I first got off the plane and I walked out and I saw all of these people mm -hmm. and I felt fear. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know when I first got here, I didn't know anyone. Mm -hmm. I had nowhere to go. I wow. didn't know a soul here. I didn't even have a hotel. You're kidding Yeah, me. and so people were bustling and hustling and everyone's doing their hustle and they're trying to carry my bags and, mm -hmm. and putting me in a cab and all of this stuff. And I asked the cab driver to take me to a hotel and, and, and that's the way that I got started. But the first feeling that I felt was fear. Wow. Maybe that's a good thing because I haven't felt that feeling since. Wow, in 19 years, you haven't felt that feeling since. Not, so you would not say once. fear. Yeah. Wow, well, I would say it would take, it took a lot of courage yeah. for you to come that long ago. You know uh, what I'm saying? It, no, it really wasn't fear. It was, it was, I wasn't comfortable when I right. got I wasn't yeah. comfortable because I'm in the new surroundings. Exactly. I didn't know anyone. I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. So I felt vulnerable. Right. That's, that's, that's a better word. Mm -hmm. I felt vulnerable. But I have not since then mm -hmm. felt that way. I mean, I'm in love. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. He's in love, guys. He's in love with, with the motherland. Yes, I am. So since you're being in love, mm -hmm. can you tell us the most exciting experience that you've been through by being here in Ghana? Oh, I have no problem at <laughs> all sharing that experience with you. Mm -hmm. I was driving down the street one day uh -huh. and I was over in um, a part of a car called Achimota. Mm. And I was driving and I saw driving range coming soon. So I had a friend, I says, well, I'm going to, I could take my friend out to the drive it and mm -hmm. teach. But there was, it was the young lady who I did end up marrying, but I was going to teach her how to drive. And Later on, as it started coming up, mm -hmm. I saw it wasn't that kind of driving range. Oh, It was okay. a golf driving range. So oh. Tiger Woods was so big at that time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, I, I, you know, I'm black too. I can, <laughs> right. I, like, I can, I can try that, right. I can do this. <laughs> so I said, let me go out here and let me try hitting that ball. Mm -hmm. And I went out there and I tried to hit the ball and I used what they call uh, a driver, which is mm -hmm. the biggest club in your bag and it should okay. go the longest, mm -hmm. right? And so they got down and I went and they hit the ball mm -hmm. and it went about from here to the car, about 40 feet. Wow. And I was like, I cannot get, how can, and these mm -hmm. people are hitting that ball and it's just going mm -hmm. and it's just going and, and now I'm like, uh oh, mm -hmm. I can beat this. I can do what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I started becoming every day mm -hmm. and every day. And over the years with the practice, mm -hmm. building up my skills. So golf, mm -hmm. golf is the thing that has helped me most here. Wow. When I first got here, I could hardly walk a block. I was very heavy. I really? could hardly walk a block without mm. sitting down resting. Walk mm. a block without sitting down resting. And it was just so hot here. Mm -hmm. and, and then I had to get inside the chochos and, and the different things. And mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was very hard. Now look at me now. Mm -hmm. I'm walking 18 holes. Sometimes I do 36 ah, holes. So you active now. Yeah, huh? very <laughs> active. So golf, mm -hmm. golf is the thing that has done everything for me. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Well, with you saying golf, golf, because 
golf is not really a big sport here. They have golf. Yes. But kind of you being an avid golfer. Yes. You know, kind of. No, I wasn't was, then. Mm, I didn't know about golf. golf but, but you being, you almost, I think, discovered something about yourself. Yes. Would you yes. say? Yes. Moving here to Ghana Absolutely. with your golf club. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. It really, really yeah. is. So that's the most exciting experience. That was the exci most excited experience. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, my marriage at that time could mm -hmm. rival it. Okay. But, but that didn't last for that lasts for about five years, mm -hmm. and I have no bad wishes for my ex at oh, all. Oh, well, that's it's a good thing. beautiful. We still talk. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. she called me this morning and wished me a happy birthday. Today is oh, my birthday. Today's your birthday. Yes. See, he kept that from me, guys. <laughs> happy birthday, <laughs> thank Jenny. you. Thank you. In thank the you. comment section, send him birthday. <laughs> send him a birthday love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so when you came here, did you like face any type of culture shock? Because you came here 19 years ago. Yes, yes, yes. Mm, so can you go into that? Yes, I did. Uh, look, when you come, this is not a first world country. You understand? Right, right. They don't have the amenities mm -hmm. that a uh, place like the West Europe, America, right, like right. they have. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had to adjust mm -hmm. my mental capacity mm -hmm. to the, um, how, what should I say, the things that they don't have here that I'm used to. Right, right. And uh, such as showering. Yes. You know, uh, at some time you have to pick water up and mm -hmm. you, you shower with a bucket of water. I mm -hmm. love that. And then uh, the washcloths. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. The washcloths. <laughs> the washcloths. Tell me about it, Jim. <laughs> Uh, what do they call these washcloths that they have here? <laughs> kind of like the rough ones? Yes. 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 I don't but even know what they're called. I could not. I could. I said, I could never use that. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> I could never use it. Now I could never use a cloth again. See? It is mm -hmm. so, it's so clean mm -hmm. and it doesn't hold dirt. Cloth holds dirt. Mm. These things, when you come over to another man's country, mm -hmm. you can't look and say, he should do that better or he should do this. No. Look, they walk around with stuff on their head. It's shielding them from the sun. Mm -hmm. And it's also mm -hmm. economical for them. So they can do other things with their hands. They, these are the most ingenious people that mm -hmm. I have ever run across in my life. Wow. Ghanaians. Wow. They can make anything out of nothing. See? And I saw that the culture shock, at first I had to get used to it, mm -hmm. especially the money. And then I was saying, God, I need to learn, I need to learn the language because these people <laughs> must be cheating me. They gotta be cheating me. <laughs> so I gotta soon learn. As <laughs> soon as they hear my voice, then the price goes up. Right, <laughs> I think that's just the necessary, we gotta yes, deal with, yes, yeah. yeah. But I'm past that point right. now, I'm past that point. Yeah, you're a pro now. Yeah, I'm a pro now. He's a veteran guy. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ask me if I could speak a tree, mm -hmm. uh, I would say, uh, 40%. 40%. Well, that's good. Yeah, yeah, That's is. good. Because yeah, some can people can't it. even speak it, speak it at all. 40%. So, Chui, is that the only language here that you know that's, how to speak? No. Oh, 40%? Yeah, yeah, it's the only language here that I know how to speak. Mm, but okay. I do, I speak some uh, some Filipino mm -hmm. and some Japanese. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah. Oh, Jamaican Patwa. Okay, yeah. so, 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 you have, so you have a little mix. Yeah, That's yes, good, yes, so you yes. have a little mix. Yeah. So with you saying that about being, you know, kind of them being so ingenious. Yes. Yeah, I think we forget being from the West, mm -hmm. you know, not everything that we do is right. Right. Certain things that we do, we can learn from them. Mm -hmm. And you know, vice versa, Absolutely. it's all a learning Absolutely. experience. And see, with you, you were open-minded. Yes. Being here, you have yes. to be very open-minded, right. you know, to a different culture. Mm -hmm. You know, this is yeah. where, this is where our people Absolutely are. Absolutely right. You know, this is where our people are. So. I, 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 when I was here for a while, I was asked, I was approached uh, by a member of Omega Sci-Fi fraternity. Mm -hmm. And they asked me to become a member or, you know, so I, I said, yeah, mm -hmm. that was at age 57. Mm, so you became a cute dog. I, I became okay. a cute dog. Cute dog in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and I became a cute dog. Mm -hmm. And all around me, mm -hmm. all of my friends were business owners. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, the old, uh, the old saying that if you are around mm -hmm. something, you become it. That sure it rubs off on you. It rubs mm -hmm. off. And mm -hmm. that's one of the greatest things that has rubbed off on me. I have opened my business as well. Okay. And so now we are all business owners, oh. you know. So it's, it, it's just a great feeling. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy that with the decisions that I've made up to this point. Mm -hmm. It sounds like that you've really, you've kind of expanded and grown yeah. since you've been here. Yeah. And I think that's amazing because that's what it's all about, growth and expansion. And by being here for 19 years, can you tell me the positives and negatives that you've seen with Ghana as a whole? Look, anywhere you go, mm -hmm. any country, any city, mm -hmm. any, any, there is no absolute. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be positives and negatives. Mm -hmm. So before I list the positives and negatives that I see, mm -hmm. just know that any other country, there are positives and negatives. Right, everywhere you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I dislike, uh, one of the negative things that I didn't like was, uh, we were just discussing it a minute ago, as soon as you hear a foreign accent, the price mm -hmm. goes up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, right. And another thing uh, that I didn't like, they call everyone O'Bruni. Mm -hmm. So they call us white. <laughs> yeah. They call black Americans mm -hmm. white. Everyone is white here. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. And uh, uh, they, <clears throat> here, it's in the culture, they call, they call you daddy. Mm -hmm. That's a, that is a term of respect right. for an older person. Mm -hmm. And um, here they also, uh, what else? What else? They call you daddy. Uh, they call you papa. Mm -hmm. You know all of those, all the different, the different addresses. Uh, I didn't like being called that at first. Mm, okay. But because when Ronald Reagan was in office, mm -hmm. the Africans were saying. Oh, he's my, he's our father, he's my right. dad. But the whole world saw it as them groveling mm. and them being submissive to him, That's which good. that wasn't it. Mm. It was a sign of respect for his age. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you want to do is come in here. You want to change things and you are, yeah. okay, these people don't know and this and that. This, uh, we got to change things. No, you have to come in here and assimilate. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to do first. Mm -hmm. You have to respect the way these people have been doing things for all of these years, you have to respect mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And if you think you come here and you say, I know better, I grew up over here and I don't have the same quality that, you don't, don't expect the same quality of anything that you're gonna have in America. Right, You understand? Exactly. So you really have to have a love for the country mm -hmm. and you probably have to be black. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that but you probably have to be Thank black God. to to feel that, <laughs> mm -hmm. to get that feeling. Because if you're from another race and you come here, a lot of things probably won't measure up to where you come from, right. you know? Right. But if you are black and you say, well, these are my people and okay, I can take this and you know, but then that stuff starts to grow inside of you. Yes. And yes. then you start, your eyes start to open and you see the real beauty of the country. Mm -hmm. You see the real beauty of the people. You see the real beauty of the system that they have here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I've discovered the beauty. That's mm -hmm. why you see this light in my eye. Uh, Cause he does, you have a glimmer. Oh, I, I could talk to you about like Ghana all day, thank all you. day long. Yes. So what would you say to your brothers and sisters who are currently here mm -hmm. and they're like, you know, Ghana, I'm really, cause some, you know, struggling yeah. and everything. What would you say to them in terms of finding that safe haven in Ghana is sticking it out? Because mm. Ghana for some people is not for the faint heart, yeah, Absolutely. but at the same time, it's rewarding. Right. It I mean, look at you sitting yeah, here. So yeah, what would you yeah. say to your brothers and sisters coming from the diaspora? I would, I would say, don't give up whatever mm. you do. When the times get hard, push that much harder. You understand? Yes. You need to have confidence that you can uh, accomplish your goals here. Mm -hmm. And every day you wake up, work, do one thing at least towards your ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you will get there. 
Uh, lean on the diaspora here. Mm -hmm. We have a diaspora community here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. I'm a former president of the African American Association of Ghana. Oh, really? Yes. And oh, okay. Now uh, I am the corresponding secretary for the African American Association of Ghana. Mm -hmm. We are, and you can look it up, but we, we try to help our own mm -hmm. while we're doing community service. We try to help our own. So we have a support system here mm -hmm. in Ghana. So I suggest that you use the support system if you're mm -hmm. here. And if you're thinking about coming here, come on in. <laughs> like, the come. water is fine. <laughs> I'm oh. telling you, if you can't swim, don't worry. Mm -hmm. We have life jackets. Oh. You come here with your ideas, mm -hmm. bring them to Africa share them with Africans. Mm -hmm. Come, don't stand back and say, oh, uh, ask stupid questions like, are there monkeys in the street and right. are there lions and tigers? I'm gonna get eaten. I don't know nothing about no Africa. You're from Africa. Mm -hmm. That's it, don't get me started. Oh no, no Jimmy, what you're saying is complete gold and our brothers and sisters need to hear this. They really, really do because you're coming here with almost being for 20 years. Yes. So I would say you're that inspiration for, you know, I know there's other, also other people mm -hmm. who have been here a little longer. Yes. But I mean, really that inspiration that we can, this is our home and we can like stick it out. We're here, we're here right. for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, we're here for a reason and we were called here. So segueing from that, you are this, I'd say he's a business guru, guys. <laughs> he's a jack of all trades. I'm a okay. golfer. Oh, yeah, you really are, you're a jack of all trades. We're sitting here yeah. at the Printing Palace, yes. okay? Yes. It feels like a palace. So please tell us about the Printing Palace. When was it started? How was it opened? You know, you would not believe uh, we have been open now today mm -hmm. one month month really one month we've been open uh you can come here at the printed palace the call us at uh 533 and you can also uh send us an email at printed palace at gmail.com there you go printed palace at gmail.com so you heard him come to printing palace i mean you do like lamination photocopies we do designs, every typing printing oh okay and we do billboards <laughs> okay uh, the whole thing wow. you would, you, as a matter of fact i have in this compound here mm -hmm. we're going to be doing a store today and we're taking wow. down their old uh advertisement and we're putting up their new uh, I graduated from Long Island University mm. and my degree is in media arts mm. and 90% <laughs> of the people mm. don't go into what they went to college for. That's true. So That's I'm going true. into it. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, and I have a great team working with me. We cannot do this interview without you guys meeting my team. You must be. Oh, they, okay. We are like a family here. And mm -hmm. if we have to stay late, we all stay late. Mm -hmm. And if one person, uh, you know, if he, he lags behind, the other person helps him up. Mm -hmm. So we, we are very good at what we do. Oh, I can see I that. I want to bring the American quality mm -hmm. here to Ghana. Yes. Our, I feel personally mm -hmm. that our workmanship is the best mm -hmm. here in Ghana. I know. I'm going to strive for that. Yeah, I know it is, Jimmy. <laughs> but you're like, I'm not going to rest. No, okay, no, like, I'm <laughs> just, and so it's not, for excellence. you're right. You're, thank you for that. <laughs> I, if it's not, I'm not going to rest until it is. Oh, well, see, that's what it's all about. Yeah. So it's like, so the Printing Palace guys, Come here for all of your needs when it comes to printing. Thank He's you. He's located in East Lagoon. So to just to wrap this up, can you just tell us like what would be your what you want our viewers to take away for this video to be? Uh, I, I okay. I want you. Uh, I want you to take away <laughs> from this today. <laughs> take the printing palace with you when you go to sleep. Okay. And uh, also, you are an accomplished author oh, as well. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. Life in the Times. 
by Jimmy Thorne. Could yes. you please tell a little bit about just like in like there's a few seconds about okay. what this video is about? This this book is about my life. It's about growing. Uh, it's about the trials and tribulations that I've gone through so far. Mm -hmm. It's about dealing with society and the games in society that mm -hmm. people play and how to deal with that. Uh, also, uh, I was, I tell about my life when I was in America and when I grew up. Uh, I was a correction officer for many years and worked on Rikers Island. Mm -hmm. And I, I wasn't always this person that you see here now. Right. So I had to go through a transformation. So I put all of those things down. It's a very interesting mm. read. Everyone who picks up this book say, I can't put it down. Oh, wow. I'm serious. So, uh, yes. So if you, if you check out Life and Times by Jimmy Thorne. It's a good read, I promise you. Mm, okay, Jimmy. Well, listen, well, I'm going to get my copy today. <laughs> so, because I'm telling you, this is probably jam packed full yeah. of a lot of stuff. So, Absolutely. thank you so much, Jimmy, for and coming no on the channel. This was an absolute pleasure. I've enjoyed this. Oh, we so can sit and talk for hours. Excellent. Okay. You are a great interviewer. Oh, well, listen, it uh, takes the great interview. <laughs> So thank you. You're Jimmy, also a politician. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you guys for tuning in. And please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this information with others. And all of his information will be in the description box. Okay. Thank you. All right. I... Next time. Bye.